good morning everyone so today being tuesday we are doing history art and culture as it is scheduled for a program known as mission mains 2022 so just in case if you haven't seen it as yet so monday to saturday five questions will be posted so most expected questions and i'll give you a rational as to why these topics have been taken up now today we are taking the issue of tribal uprisings since uh, this was there in the yesterday's news so aluri sitarama raju then as we are talking about a particular personality why not discuss the nature of the tribal uprisings the characteristics of the tribal uprisings so a more generic question generic theme so that we are covering so two questions here then we have three questions on the bhakti movement and UPSC has been asking questions repeatedly on this. So this will be a very comprehensive coverage of your Bhakti movement. Okay. So one line of thought is the nature and you know the contributions of the Bhakti saints, the positive dimension. So that is one question the previous year 2021 it asked. Then long back it asked us a question with reference to the Sufi and the mystic saints. Now, naturally, Sufi is Islamic, so mystic saints should imply bhakti saints. That their contributions, you know, their the activities that they did was not long-standing. Whatever social reforms, whatever things that they wanted to bring about changes, they were there, that was good, very nice, but it hasn't lasted as yet. Because we don't see long, you know, this uh, long uh, changes that should have been visible. So the shortcomings part, so contributions, positive and shortcomings. So both we can do it simultaneously since we are doing the first topic. Then the other way of asking is asking about a particular personality. So here we are doing Kashmiri mystic saint, Lal Dead, very, very important. Kashmir topic, very important. The president of India goes to Kashmir, he invokes Lal Dead, the prime minister invokes Lal Dead. So very important, always there in current affairs plus Kashmiri, Kashmiriyat, the composite culture, Lal Dead's contribution in that, so very important. Now coming to the first question, and uh, I said it in my daily news analysis also, that we'll be taking up these two topics. So one is Aluri Sita Ramaraju, and other was the tribal thing. So throw light on the contributions of Aluri Sitarama Raju to the cause of the Indian National Movement. So naturally this is a very short, straight question. You shouldn't really have a problem with structuring actually. You briefly have to say about who was Aluri Sitarama Raju, then the activities that he did, right, uh, in all for the tribal movement, for the tribal struggle and then conclude on a positive note. That's all you have to do. Now for this, I have two reference. One is obviously the article. And in the article we get that this year is the 125th birth anniversary. That again makes it important. And there will be year long celebrations. So that means we will get the content from the PIB. So we refer to the PIB and here it is for you. I'll discuss this and I will also share the link on the comment section for your reference. Okay, so you can briefly start by this or and you can also refer to Aluri Sita Rama Raju as a, as a key contributor to the tribal uprising, especially for the Koyas of the Godavari Agency area of the Madras Presidency. So this gives a good background, you know, introduction, gives a complete idea to the examiner that, the, that what is going to come. Next, you have to bring out the aspect of what all activities that he did. Now here I find the newspaper not very, very sufficient. It tells us that, uh, obviously it tells us about the Rampa, it, this article Rampa Rebellion or Maniam Rebellion. Maniam means a forest area. And he was also known as the Maniam Virudu, Vir Udu, right? So Vir, fighter, brave person. So it tells us about him organizing the tribals and 
engaging in a struggle engaging in a protracted battle protracted means uh, means a long standing battle against the britishers those britishers who had by the means of their administration by the means of their what by the means basically had affected the tribal way of life who had hampered the socio economic way socio economic way of the tribal life they affected the society they affected the economics of the tribals now this pib will give greater clarity so this is the pib as you can see the folk hero of rampa rebellion so he was born in this thing we don't have to go here following the death of his father rama raju made up his mind to build a movement against the british he organized the adivasi area uh, adivasi areas in the eastern ghats so and decided to work for the adivasis he organized the adivasis against the atrocities by the police the forest and the revenue officials and extensively towed the uh, towed the manya media then there is a reference of the oppressive madras forest act naturally something that had curbed the rights of the tribals in the forest area so we get a, a mention over here he made the people aware of their rights naturally he made them aware and he organized them and into a guerrilla warfare right so please be careful about the spelling of guerrilla people have a tendency to get it wrong actually so don't uh, do that okay so they used traditional weapons like bow and arrow spears so that you can use and uh, they attacked the police station the same thing that was there in the article right so this is how you can go and eventually he was taken into custody and uh, by the britishers so this you can there and you can conclude in a positive light about the contributions of rama raju next we are coming to uh, some of the now this is a generic question on the tribal uprisings so earlier question was about obviously about a particular person now here again we can have other persons also like uh, this for the sanyasi rebellions or santhal santhal rebellion uh, birsa munda uh, sidhu and kanu so we can actually have for them also respectively if we can uh, have uh, a the we can prepare for this we can prepare for other topics also so that i am giving you this you should you should do that okay now coming to this uh, tribal uprisings so the question says there were some common characteristics of the tribal uprisings even though they were separated from one another in time and space okay now before we go into the discussion on the uh, i mean the structure of the question over here let's do one thing let's see what is this common characteristics so what does this characteristic basically means so when we say characteristic of something it means attribute of somebody some someone some event somebody so typically this attribute of the tribal uprising so the, what the question is trying to say that in different time and space look at the map there are these tribal areas right so these rebelling so across the region across the length and breadth of the country we find these tribal uprisings and what the question is saying that they had a common characteristics so that is that that is what and it is also saying across different time periods look at the time period there is a difference over here so this took place in different different times but overall characteristics remain the same now naturally the characteristic would be typically they were against the british raj they were against the british raj who had affected their socio economic uh, way of life they have curbed their political they curbed their political freedoms so so we get to the they were they wanted to expel the britishers they expel the system that they had introduced the british came with them came the class of money lenders the zamindars they brought in the system of land revenue so they were against it they wanted to expel the dikus the outsiders from their territories right so that is there then the mode of struggle that is also a characteristic 
this was a violent struggle not a non violent so violent struggle they used spears and arrows as we studied in the previous the pib thing hey right. they were messia you know it was based on the messia type of movement for example sita ramu uh, uh, aluri sita rama raju so messia that somebody will come and they will liberate them from the outs others liberate them from the atrocities of the british so messi sidu and uh, sidu and kanu birsa munda they are all examples of messia like movements so that was there then it was again uh, this is a part of the causes so activities of the missionaries so it was also against the christian missionaries that were coming here so you know this is how your answer should flow so you can start your answer by telling us about this aspect of that they had common characteristics despite them being separated in time and space now elaborate this elaborate this in the introduction part start by this then mention the aspect of common characteristics cause mode of movement and elaborate them don't be very and elaborate them and make sure that your answer is not mechanical it flows logically you know when the reader is when somebody is reading it is flowing sometimes it will okay point this point starts this point starts that answer will not get as many marks as the answer which flows logically and it's much easier to read also so that makes the examiner very happy also okay right so this you have to do now one aspect that you have to mention is that there were two types of tribal uprisings tribal uprisings in the mainland region and tribal uprisings in the frontier regions now the frontier movements were a bit different from the mainland because in the mainland the penetration of the british the british system so was much more in the in the this thing in the you know as we move to the frontier areas they they were more affected with the autonomy they wanted for the political uh, freedoms political liberties so they it was more for political reasons for autonom autonomous reasons they wanted greater autonomy while here it was basically from the point of view of socio economic reasons them being impoverished these people from tribal they are becoming agri agriculture laborers right so this aspect has to come okay now for this reference you can use uh, you know this is from the tribal uprisings chapter so i have referred to this byju's notes so you can actually use this notes for value addition over here so this is the ncrt actually so 8th ncrt you will get this not to show sure, part 1 or part 2 but it is there in the 8th uh, history ncrt and you can also get it in themes in uh, this thing uh, themes in indian history 12th ncrt so you can actually read this this will provide that connections that i was saying the logical flow of your answer next coming to the bhakti movement so first question with reference to bhakti movement evaluate the nature of bhakti literature and its contribution to indian culture fine so it's briefly what is bhakti literature you have to establish this and then tell us about the nature and the contribution nature characteristics is the same thing as i discussed in the previous uh, uh previous answer okay so when we see the bhakti literature it was a product of the bhakti movement that was going on from the period of 8th to 17th century 8th to 17th century so this is how you can uh start your answer and you can give a reference to some of the important popular uh, folk traditions or the bhakti traditions that were there yeah. refer to the kirtans dohe right so like that you can elaborate okay now coming to the nature of the bhakti literature the bhakti literature was devotional in nature 
it was advocating religious harmony right it it was hindu muslim unity it was condemning the issue of bigotry superstitions rituals domination of the priestly class so it was trying to bring about a reform in the society it preached unity you know it it preached on the virtues of humanity for them every uh, ram and allah was same so there is like one god one one religion one caste everybody is basically the same obviously one god one religion is actually coming from shri narayan guru but uh, that is the same virtue that the bhakti literature actually depicts so it was kind of a reformative movement and it was kind of a reaction against the wrongs or the social evils that were prevalent during the contemporary times right so that you have to mention now what was the contribution what was the good effect now bhakti literature was to spread the movement spread the ideas it was to bring about a social reform so naturally more and more people had to read it so it was in vernaculars that the common people could read and understand now here we have some um, i have you know taken this thing so bengali was used by chitanya chitanya mahaprabhu and by the poet chandidas bhakti leader shankara deva who popularized the assamis used the assamis movement so assamis literature developed because of this likewise marathi kabir nanak punjabi in my case uh, tulsi das right so the vernaculars had actually developed as a result of this so the growth of vernacular language and bhakti literature are related then some of the bhakti movements actually related you know led to creation of new sects sometimes growing into religion also so sikhism kabir path so like that new sects had evolved within the religion and sometimes it also moving into the next religion okay it led to the growth of philosophical ideas shankaracharya's uh, uh, you know the philosophy of vedanta ramanujacharya so growth of philosophical ideas then we have one more thing like uh, we have reference of uh, changes in the art you know the literary style so it liberated poetry from sing singing the praises of kings and introduced spiritual themes so if you have read the ncrts so you would have referred to the prashasties and things to be said in the praise of the king so now it was for the common people using the spiritual themes so from that point of view this thing had developed literary development had taken place so from a style point of view it introduced simple and accessible styles like vachanas in kannada takis dohas and other forms in various languages and had ended the hegemony of the sanskrit metr metrical forms okay so this is there now how do we conclude this so we can actually conclude by talking about uh, it was about social reforms this movement so one thing could be that the bhakti literature or the bhakti movement was kind of a social was kind of a relief to the society that was hampered by the oppressions or by the it was a great reprieve for the contemporary society bringing in the virtues of reforms and inclusivity in the society so something that like that and you can conclude your answer in in fact when you actually conclude it should be in the form of an evaluation right what marks that you give so like that evaluate so based on whatever you have mentioned your conclusion should actually be corresponding to that now the shortcomings part so we have done the positive thing now shortcoming the so sufi and medieval mystic saints so we imply this to be bhakti fail to modify either the religious ideas either the religious ideas and practices or the outward structure of hindu muslim society societies to an any appreciable extent 
it so we discuss the positives so this is comment so this is not like we have to agree with the statement in fact it's both ways we have to give a balanced view so we can talk about the shortcomings and then also talk about the positives okay so now uh, we'll just cover the sh shortcomings uh, part over here so but, but before this it talks about the it failed to modify either the religious ideas and practices or the outward structure of hindu muslim societies so between both the hindus and the muslim societies there was this growth of sectarianism there was the growth of uh, exclusivity there was growth of bigotry superstition rituals had emerged in fact even within the islam the don the caste the notion of caste had emerged in fact it is there in sikhism also so these systems actually percolated within the society and the bhakti and the sufi movement sufi of the islamic version was to bring about a reform right it was to bring about a reform and correct this flaws but we all know that these things are actually continuing it is percolated to the present day society so all these good things all the messaging that has been done but still the, the that form of religion that form of the notion of untouchability and the casteism and exclusivity that still is ex exclusion not exclusivity exclusion is still continuing within the society so you can start your answer by talking about some saints over here then talking about the the reason of this movement and then come to the shortcomings so one is that there was no institutional structure there was no institutional structure they were able to reach the local populace with the vernaculars with the popular traditions but still there was no institutional structure so whatever was thought that was relevant for that time and then again it it just vanished so lineage of the saints could not continue for example when we have a religion let's say institutional structure so for for example sikhism so bhakti movement guru nanak dev ji started this and then he started a religion then it was everything was documented so that institutional structure remained you know it, it remained and that thing continued even then there are shortcomings so that wasn't there so kabir pant kabir uh, dashi started this movement and then there was a pant also but that it wasn't to that extent right so that institutional structure wasn't there it was just for the um, it was kind of a teacher and followers teacher and worshipper that kind of a relationship and then it goes so overall hierarchy of the religion actually continued of the with the flaws continued then the sufi and the bhakti saints failed to offer a proper alternative to the social customs they said okay fine this is wrong this is wrong but they were not able to provide a proper alternative to this so again the same system continued the most of the followers came from the lower strata of the society it was much difficult for such sections to break the shackles of religious and social customs and form a new cult of their own right so these are some of the uh, pointers over here for reference sake i have taken this from insights on india okay so we are done with this and just before concluding this topic this particular thing um, let's look at the ncert what does the ncert say so it is from the 7th ncert devotional pass to the divine and here we have uh, right so these are all related to the bhakti and the sufi movement so we get all the addition value addition that you want to do you can get the content from here and every region region wise it is telling us kabir nanak everything is there so if you please don't ignore the ncrts okay last question bhakti and mysticism of lal deed emerged as a social force in kashmir so this is one way of putting it other way is that it provides a template of communal harmony as the president of india had put it right and the unique culture or this tradition of kashmiriyat where you know kashmiriyat means secularism in the la land of kashmir everybody coexisting hindu muslim uh, buddhist 
they coexist so yeah so with reference to this we are studying lal dead so lal dead emerged as a social force in kashmir now for this i want you to read this article over here i want you to read and then actually we will again the same template like aluri uh, sitarama raju so similar template we'll be using for writing our answers now for this i want you to read this uh, uh, article okay so you can actually start by telling us in the introduction itself about a role in influencing the kashmiri society and uh, basically it was you know she had followers from both the hindu as well as the islamic this thing and the sufi saints also took inspiration from lal dead who was actually uh, from the shaivite tradition okay so her collective memory were later penned down with as vaks meaning speech and her the lal dead whom the kashmiris muslims and sikhs alike venerate to this day as a prophetess they are not star not star something that again shows them the direction now we don't have want to go on this thing now here we have more of a teaching so this this one so lal dead's philosophy rejects the otherness of god and understands the world as an extension of one's own inner conscious she questions the dogmatic thought of today's world with vax displaying her inclusivity so the verses reveal in their own syncretic idiom the religious mystic and linguistic blend they support right so this is how this is these are certain things that you can incorporate in your answer right so this is it from my side i am sharing this content with you on the comment comment box so do attempt these answers and this will help you with your upcoming mains examination bye bye take care and all the best